Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our second live stream broadcast from Row Gallery. I'm so excited you're here, and I hope you're all doing well. If I haven't met you, I'm Ken Rowe, and this is Snickle Fritz, my little buddy. So to wrap last week, if you will, go to our website, and if you click on the Facebook icon, you'll see the segment we did. La I'll put this guy on. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, you'll see the link we did for last week's show, and it'll kind of give you a brief overview of what we're doing. And so the concept is, as I was mentioning before, if you can't come to us for obvious reasons, we're going to come to you. And we've got an amazing opportunity here because I have been commissioned to do this piece, this life-size piece, very large. And so the question is, how do you start the piece? And my answer is, I always start with live reference. So yes, that's me. Um, and that is Simba. So what you can see here is I'm sculpting Simba live, being able to touch Simba at the same time and sculpt my piece. And this is the little maquette that came of this session. So as I was saying before, touching that animal and then touching the piece in the same, at the same time, there's so little distortion in the translation. In other words, I could have a photo of this in my studio, but what better reference could I have than actually touching the animal and touching my piece? So let's fast forward in time, thanks to this commission. Now here's Simba and me. Um, what I wanted to do was present this to the client who thankfully commissioned me, and these are the dimensions that I came up with. So what I did was I took this 53 inch long torso from here to here, measured this, divided it into the 53 inches, and that gave me my scale. So I'm building the armature, which we saw last week, on that scale, and this is a Photoshop, thanks to our wonderful Winona, that plugged this piece into scale, so our clients could see how that's gonna look, and that's just an image of this scaled up to 53 inches from here to the shoulder. So, again, um, like I was mentioning last week, I used to be a taxidermist. Everything is about the bones. So this is the skeletal structure that's underneath here. It's articulated. I can bend it and move it as I, as I want. I've got measurements of each one of these bones. So I've scaled those bones up to what you're about to see. So let's see how far I got from last week to this week. And here we go. So, uh, my wife said I went too far, <laughs> but I, it's so much fun to do this, I can't stop. And so, um, we start with the skeleton, the scaled up version of this. It's jointed, so it actually bends where the joints naturally occur. So, as I'm working on this piece and I want to bend it, and I want to reposition a leg, it will only bend where it's supposed to. So, how I do that, it took me... 20 years to figure out a system that was fast that I could utilize to make the skeleton. So, each one of these pipes is the length of the bone. This is the scapula. I slide them over the wire. This is the humerus. This is the ulnar radius. And this is the flanges. Now, I crimp those tubes onto the wire, and then I have a functioning skeleton. So this is what I have right here. So I went backwards a little bit. I had this all fleshed out with the bones, as you can see. So I thought, well, I'll back up a little bit, and I'll show you how I would approach this. So this plugs in here. Now, what I've done is I've taken all these measurements probably about 200 total of this piece, and I can orient all these points of reference from measurements off of this. So I know exactly how many inches it is going to be from here to here, from here to here, and I can orient everything mathematically, even his nose. So let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. I'm going to sculpt some bones for you. Uh, 
Um, you know, I think, I bet I have hour-wise, I was telling Lee earlier, I probably have about 70 hours in this, in this last week. And so, um, <clears throat> but it doesn't feel like a long time because it's so much fun, I can't stop myself. So what's, what I'll explain a little bit here is the clay that I use is this. It's called plastiline. It never hardens. This is how we get it. And it's basically wax. So, and it's very heavy. So this piece is going to weigh a lot. So what I've done is inside this chest cavity in the belly, I've filled with uh, filler like styrofoam to keep it lighter. And as it is right now, it's probably about probably about 80 pounds, not too bad. But this is going to quickly get to about 200 pounds as I flesh it out. So here I have some clay. And you can see it's nice and soft now, it's warm. And I'm going to start right here. We're going to lock in that shoulder. You see how nice and creamy it is. So I'm using a turkey roaster, believe it or not. The missing turkey roaster in our kitchen is what I'm using to warm up the clay. Now I'm just teasing. So the scapula, very, very important to know where this all falls into the origin and insertion of the muscles because this is going to dictate how I'm going to put all the deltoids in and everything else. So you can see now, I can work in the actual joint. And there's a rough version of the scapula. Now the blade of the scapula, this right here, that dictates the origin and insertion of all these muscles coming off of the, that scapula. Same with this. This is the head of the femur. I mean head of the humerus. So that's a very large joint. It's going to come down. And this is a little awkward from this angle, but you can kind of see it. I don't want to be in front of the camera blocking your view. Okay, so now, now you can see how these bony protrusions are going to be a very constant source of reference for me as I'm sculpting the piece because we'll go over here to the maquette. And here is the same point of reference right there. That's what I'm building. That blade of the scapula I talked about, the origin and insertion of those muscles are dictated by that blade. And of course, here's the top of the scapula. So now you can see the method of my madness here, sculpting all these bones and spending the time I need to on developing this system. So let's just do one more thing here. So let's just say I fleshed this out with the bones. Now I want to start putting in my muscles. One of the funnest ones is I start from the foot and come up. And again, this is based on orientation. Let me grab my clay. Now, you can see why this is going to get heavy really fast because this is a lot of clay. So, let's shape this a little bit. All right, now, origin is the closest to the body that a muscle starts. Insertion is the furthest away from the body, the main body. So the origin of this muscle, brachioradialis, starts right here. Now, it wraps around 
the humerus, comes down and connects to the tarsus. Now, look how that starts to make sense. And guess what? It is right here. So that's what's going to happen the rest of this week. I'm going to keep working on this piece. I'm be fleshing, I'll be fleshing it out as I go. Lots of muscles. Of course, the, the skull, big, big point of reference. Even though um, the teeth won't show, they very, they're very important because they will, they will influence the lip line and how it falls together. So this is really important. And I think next week, what we'll do is we will work on the face because I'll, I'll flesh out a lot of the stuff in the meantime. Um, also, um, check out our website. Today was supposed to be the second day of the Josh Toby show. Excuse me. <coughs> but since, you know, obvious reasons, we're not going to have that. We just did an amazing e blast yesterday. We're getting terrific response. Keep checking out our new website. Um, and also, I want to thank my friends from Red Rock TV. You got to check this app out. If you're coming this way, when all this is over with, you got to check this app out. It's free. It's an amazing resource. And it's thanks to them that we're here doing this today. So with that said, I uh, bid you a great week and we'll look forward to seeing you next week.